Hello whiskey fans, welcome back. It's time to look at another new whiskey from a new distillery. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Ardner Merkin. So Ardner Merkin is a distillery that's getting lots of praise and good word of mouth at the moment. I think I'm right in saying that it's been very well received by the whiskey community. The whiskey geeks like this one, they like Ardner Merkin Distillery. It's getting some great feedback and reviews from especially the Oswars, where I believe Arden Merkin's been nominated for Best Whiskey and Best New Distillery, if I'm right. So Arden Merkin is a very new distillery. It's a West Highland distillery founded and owned by Adelphi Independent Bottlers, and production for these guys began back in 2014. And as I said, the feedback so far and the reviews for this stuff has been very good. Not unanimously positive there's been a few people not being enormously impressed with this and i think that really goes back to what i said in re in, in the introduction to this series of reviews on new distilleries that young whiskey is always going to taste young and there's some people that are always going to have a problem with that i think that if you are going to take a plunge with one of these bottlings from a new distillery you kind of need to be at a point where you can accept a young whiskey for what it is and appreciate it for what it is because young whiskey is always going to taste young there are certain things that you can do to young whiskey and we've seen a few of them already in this series and we'll see a few more of those with the bottles to come you can add things in like virgin oak treatments str treatments possibly lowering the ABV, P itself can hide some youth, but those things are going to work to disguise the youth for some people, but for the experienced whiskey fan, youth is always going to show. There's just no way around that. Time travel does not exist yet. So anyway, back to the whiskey that we've got here. I really like this stuff, and most people do. It's a solid craft presentation, it's non-chill filtered, it's natural colour, so all those things that we love. It's bottled at a very healthy ABV of 46.8. So it's a full 0.8 up from that 46% benchmark that we all like to see. Also mentioned before I get carried away that this is bottle AD 102106, so that's batch number six. It is a very minimalist label. So it's a very minimalist and stylish bottle, as far as I'm concerned, and I like that presentation a lot. It's not got too much on there. It's not too flashy. Very straightforward, but it's got all the information that you could want for, and I'll get to that in a minute. It's also worth pointing out that with this stuff, they are a very eco-friendly and environmentally friendly distillery to the point where even the box... Is made of 100% recycled cardboard, which might explain why mine is kind of falling apart already. <laughs> but that might also be because I do find myself going back to this one again and again for another dram. Also point out which glass I'm using today. My Glen Ken for this review is going to be no other than my Ardner Merkin glass. Because why not? Because I have been to the Ardner Merkin distillery. I actually went there kind of by accident. I was on my way to, I think, the Isle of Mull and just happened to drive past the distillery. So we pulled over and went in, had a little visit, and there wasn't a lot going on because by bad luck, I actually turned up, I think it was either a few weeks before they released their first batch or a couple of weeks after when it had all sold out. So I turned up at Arden Merkin Distillery and they basically had no whiskey for me. The only thing that they had that was kind of almost Ardner Merkin whiskey was, a few of you have seen it, it's the Dancing Man blended whiskey from Adelphi. So the Dancing Man blend is obviously a blended scotch and it's bottled, blended and bottled by Adelphi, the people that own Ardner Merkin and it's got this guy on the label and the box, the Adelphi Dancing Man, which you probably can't see there because of my awful camera. But that stuff not particularly impressed at all especially considering that Adelphi is a responsible distillery they make a point of saying that any whiskey casks that they buy in that has substandard whiskey they actually sell a lot of casks to other independent bottlers rather than put what they see as substandard casks out under their own name so considering that the level of quality in that Dancing Man blend I was really disappointed with it. 
But getting back to this stuff, the new single malt that they're producing, I'm really impressed by this, and I think almost everyone has been. It's also, and I'm really pleased to say, it's surprisingly affordable and available, especially compared to whiskies from a lot of other new distilleries, things like Loch Lee, which has been an absolute pain in the ass for me to get my bottle of Loch Lee Sewing Edition here. That was the absolute opposite of available. In comparison, it was pretty easy to get hold of a bottle of this. And I think as they're rattling through the batches, because they've had six or seven batches now, it's becoming quite easy to get hold of, which is great, especially considering all the positive word of mouth that they're getting. So before I get too carried away and get too far into this, we do need to talk about bottling codes. As I said, this is bottle AD forward slash 10.21 colon 6. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? So when I bought this one, it's entirely my fault because I didn't do the full research that I should have done. But I kind of assumed that at least one of these numbers would tell you an age statement or the age of the whiskey, something like that. So I thought maybe a 10 year old, maybe a six year old, maybe an 11 year old distilled in 2010, bottled in 2021. In my opinion, this label is not clear. You do need some help and guidance in deciphering these labels because none of these numbers are to do with the age statement at all. What this tells you is that AD is obviously a Delphi. The 1021 tells you that this whiskey was bottled in October 2021 and the 6 tells you that it's batch number 6. What is even more confusing about these labels is that if you get one of the Ardnamurkin single casks, it actually works the other way around. So if you get an Ardnamurkin single cask, the two numbers here with the dot in between them actually tell you the vintage. So if this was a single cask release, which it's not, that would be distilled in October 2021 rather than bottled, which is the case with this one. <laughs> I think it's a lot a bit confusing, but at least once you know what they're saying, all of that information is there. And when it comes to all of that information being there, it really, really is. Because a lot of you are going to know that the Scotch Whiskey Association gave Brocladi and Compass Box a healthy slap in the face for trying to give the customer too inf much information because apparently it's bad to have full transparency. I'm not going to get into that rant again. But apparently we're not allowed to have the full details when you have a multi-year vatting like this whiskey is. You, we're not allowed to have those details of when each cask was distilled and put in. But if you look at the back label on this Arden American, you've got a QR code there. I'm going to hold it up to the camera until that comes into focus. So if you want to have a look at this, you can. It's no different to what you could do if you find a bottle of this on a shelf. You could scan it on your phone and have a look. Because once you do scan that, this very minimalist label gives you all the information that you could ever ask for. And I'm, I've actually printed it out. I'm not going to hold it up to the camera because I am fearful that if I start advertising the full information here, because it has got cask vintages, then that's going to get these guys into trouble with the SWA like Compass Box did. So I won't do that. But I'll tell you that there's an abundance of information here. We know that this bottle, the 1021 batch six, is distilled from Concerto Barley. It was made with a 76 hour long fermentation. The cut points were 74% and 69.5%. It even gives you a full cask breakdown. But as I'm recording this on the website, if you actually go on there with the QR code, the full cask, down, cask breakdown PDF is unavailable. I really hope that that's gonna come back. I hope they haven't been told that they've got to remove that because you guys know this is absolutely amazing that they give us all of this information. I think it's disgusting that the SWA is saying that full transparency is misleading. You're only allowed to have one number on the label and that's the youngest age. That's absolute BS. This is exactly the sort of thing that we need. This is full transparency. This is what honesty looks like. So without holding this up to the camera and possibly getting Arden Merkin in trouble, once you do buy this, you can look at the QR code and you all know that this batch six is, it's made of a combination, well, there's 60 casks gone into this, which has produced 
a total output of 21,000 bottles. So although Ardenmarken are producing batch releases, they're not small batches at all. Absolutely not small batches. But 60 casks gone into this and 31 of them are unpeated. 29 of them are peated. My bottle from this is bottle number 111. We know that a lot of the casks that have gone into this, probably the slight majority, are ASB American Standard Barrels, so that's ex-bourbon. There's also a bunch of hogsheads gone into there, and a single sherry butt. And that single sherry butt, it tells us that it was previously held Spanish Oloroso. It's an unpeated cask from 2016. And the fact that I've told us that it's, it's a butt, tells us that it's likely to be a 500 litre cask and it's probably, although not necessarily, European oak. So the casks that have gone into this out of the 31 unpeated casks, they range from 2014 to 2016. We've got a lot of unpeated ASB casks, some Spanish Oloroso hogsheads, one Spanish Oloroso but from the peated casks, of which there were 29, so very just under half. Most of those were ASB ex-bourbon casks. There was a few, quite a few Spanish Oloroso hogsheads. There was one American Oloroso hogshead and they range from 2015 vintage up to 2016. So amazing that we've got all of that information from Arden American. I really love that. And if anyone from Arden American is listening, watching this, then this kind of thing makes me want to buy your products again. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. It is also interesting to note that you've got the cask numbers on here as well for all 60 casks. And the lowest cask number that I can see is number 61, which is a Spanish Oloroso hogshead with peated spirit in it. And that's actually not the oldest cask, as you might think. Cask number 61 is from 2016. Whereas some of the oldest casks were from 2014, we're looking at casks numbers in the range between kind of 163 up to just under 400. So I'm not entirely sure how they're numbering their casks, but worth pointing out that the lower numbers aren't necessarily the earlier vintages. Anyway, fantastic that we've got that information. And if you buy a bottle of Arden Merkin, make sure that you have a look at that QR code and have a look at what goes into yours. So apologies that that took a little while, but it's Arden Merkin's fault really, because they gave me all of this information. If they give me all these details, I'm forced to be interested by it and look at it. Because that's how it works. Let's cut similar glass, because I've not got much left at all. It's always a little bit of a sign when I come to review a whiskey. If there's not much left, more often than not, it means I've been enjoying it. So obviously that is a beautiful natural colour coming from those ASB casks, American Spanish Oloroso, and that single Oloroso butt. Also non-chill filtered. So Arden American AD102106 on the nose. Lovely chocolatey maltiness on the nose. Also, I'm very pleased to say that that peat is very prominent. There's a lovely, light, spicy peat. A little bit of an Ardmore style peat. Slightly farmy, although not too much. Not what I would call a medicinal style of peat. Slightly farmy, with a little bit of a peppery spiciness. So, pepper, black pepper... And I think mixing in with that sherry that's gone into this, getting some notes of cocoa powder, chocolate, dark chocolate, chocolate raisins. There's a wonderful sweet fruitiness on the nose of this whiskey. And it's not a flat sort of blanket covering up sort of sherry cask finish sweetness that you're getting on this. It's very well integrated. Getting a note of kind of like glacé cherries, you know, the, the sugary ones that you get in a little tub for cooking. Nice, sharp, but not overly dominating fruity maltiness. Cocoa, chocolate, wood spice, really well balanced. Nice complexity. Let's see how it tastes. It 
again on the palette. Nice chocolatiness. I think that's coming through partly from the wood spice, partly from the sherry. Nice maltiness, mildly spicy and funky peat on the palette of this one. Wood spice, turmeric, sweet musty lemon notes from the malt, sweet rounded sherry. I really like that you can really taste the influence of the barley on this one. Really excellent maltiness, complemented so well by the quality of the sherry casks that have gone into this, and exactly the right amount of peat on this one that is satisfying without getting in the way and really stepping on the toes of all the other components. Just going to have one more sip and look at the finish. I think the finish, I'm going to say medium length, an excellent body, and on the finish it's really all about that very pleasant sweet maltiness just with a hint of those warming wood spices as for a grade i'm going to give this one a solid b which i think is an astounding grade for such a young whiskey hopefully the, the scotch whiskey association has buggered off and they're not listening by this point <laughs> but the age of this whiskey we know the the cask vintages from everything that goes into this so, although they haven't given us an age statement and there's nothing on the label, because they're not allowed to tell us, we know that the youngest cask that goes into this is from 2016. So this, if it did have an age statement, they would be forced to call this around about a six-year-old whiskey. And I think that, obviously, some of those casks are edging up to around the seven-ish age mark, but... If this was labelled as a six-year-old whiskey, I think this is a fantastic effort. It's very mature for just six years. I think that this is more mature than most of the new releases in this lineup that I'm reviewing through this series. I think that it is sl a slight touch lighter than some of the others. I feel that this is a slightly more delicate, slightly more cerebral single malt than some of these other new distillery releases, possibly because it is that little bit more mature. It's just that little bit more subtle. But I'm really impressed by the flavours that are in this one. And I think that because of that lightness, I think that a cask strength Ardner Merkin is very likely to be in my future purchases. So to try and help you guys see if this might be something that you would enjoy. It's always helpful, I think, to compare it to other whiskies. And looking at things that I've reviewed recently, I think that with that Highland peat going into this one and the style of it, I think that if you're another person like myself that really misses that craft presentation Ardmore, the Ardmore traditional cask, I think that you'll really love this one. And I also think that with that mix of some bourbon and some sherry and that slightly funky smoky peat it's probably also a good springbank 10 alternative i do think that the peat in this one is toned down slightly from what you get in the springbank 10 but not too much but i think the balance of flavors that you get on this anyone that really appreciates the springbank 10 and obviously we have almost zero availability on the springbank 10 at the moment anyone that likes that will probably get on well with this so, all in all, I'm very pleased with this one. I would definitely buy Ardner Merkin whiskey again. I'd say don't let the Dancing Man No Age Statement blend put you off, because this is much, much better. I think that Ardner Merkin is doing a fantastic job. It's fantastic that they've got that environmentally friendly distillery. Confusing labels, but the QR code is absolutely amazing with all that info. That amazing compass box level transparency. Thank you, thank you Ardner Merkin for providing all that information because we do really appreciate it. I think that Ardner Merkin is really a distillery where you either love it already or you're about to fall in love. So let me know what you think about Ardner Merkin and let me know what you think about the other batches if you've had them. Because I think I'm right in saying that the 06 at the end of this one on the label means that this is batch 6 that I've got. So there are five other batches. And I have got some samples from those other batches and I haven't got around to trying them yet. I think I've probably got like batch one, three and five. What was your favourite batch if you've been trying them as they've been coming out? Do you think that this is a suitable alternative to Ardmore and possibly the Springbank 10? What do you think that this is most like and would you buy it again? Thanks for watching and cheers.
Oh, oh, oh.